So I think about three things that everyone who wants to anticipate disruptions uh, need, need, needs to know. The one is um, the, the concept itself of disruption, which has changed quite a bit since it was first introduced in just about two decades ago, um, which was disruption from below. And this is when a technology in the beginning is not good enough. When it's made with off-the-shelf products, it's not nearly as good as what the mainstream market is offering. But through constant improvements in the technology cost curve, this uh, going at a faster rate than what the mainstream market is offering, it may take decades, it may take years, but eventually, they catch up and they disrupt the mainstream market. And an example of that is digital cameras. So digital cameras were improving by about 58, 59% year after year after year. And then one day, boom, it disrupted the industry. Uh, mobile phones, solar power. Um, this is the the, the, the publishing industry in the US, the, the print newspaper industry. And even when the web came out, their revenues were still going up. So of course, what did the experts say? There is no way, nobody's gonna read a newspaper online. Are you kidding me? It's ugly, it's, you know, why would anyone bother doing that? And someone who actually, one of the entrepreneurs who created the ethernet said the internet is going to collapse. It's going to catastrophically collapse next year. So again, it's the insiders who will dismiss these market opportunities. Um, and of course, here's what happened. Um, there's a certain company in Mountain View called um, Google, which came up with a business model innovation and Boom, it disrupted the whole print newspaper industry. Um, now there is a new model of disruption, which is disruption from above. So that was a disruption from below. When you have a product that initially is not that good, but improves at a faster rate than uh, the mainstream market. Disruption from above. The electric vehicle. I'm gonna come back to this, but it's when you start with products that are superior to the mainstream market. Uh, they're, they're better in so many ways, but also they're more expensive. And because of that, they tend to grab a niche market, a small market, um, but the technology cost curve goes down at a faster rate than the mainstream market. And at some point, it comes and disrupts the market. It's just a matter of time. I'm going to come back to this curve, but this is what a disruption from above looks like. And this is a technology cost curve. Um, the other thing that we need to think about when we think about disruption is the concept of exponential technologies. Um, so anyone who works in computers, anyone who uses computers, um, is taking advantage of Moore's law. And Moore's law essentially says that computing improves at about 41% every year. Now when you compound 41%, that means computer for the same dollar doubles performance essentially every two years. And if you double, and then double, and then double, what you get is that computing has improved by about a billion times since 1970. A billion times. So computers that used to be the size of this theater can be put into essentially you know, a little ring today, a billion times. Um, so this is the concept of exponential technologies. And uh, the web, uh, your iPhone, uh, internet, all of these uh, take advantage not just of Moore's law, but of other laws. Uh, network capacity, Butter's law of photonics, which has improved at 50% every nine months. Um, Kreider's law, data storage, 
which improves at a rate of 50% every 18 months. And all of these run in parallel. I mean, they build on one another, but they run in parallel. Uh, digital imaging, uh, you know, what disrupted Kodak is essentially 100% improvement every 18 months. Um, so all of these are exponential technologies, and when you put them together, then boom, you can, you can uh, disrupt a market. Today, we're looking at about a dozen, I'm looking at about a dozen key exponentially improving technologies that you see here. Uh, robotics, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, uh, mobile internet is still an exponentially improving set of technology. Sensors are improving hugely. And I'm gonna touch on some of these, not on all of the above. Um, but today, I'm gonna talk about four. Four sets of technologies that are exponentially uh, improving and are going to disrupt the existing transportation and energy worlds. But first, a question. Has anyone been to Barcelona lately? Barcelona? Wow, this is amazing. Amazing, what's in Barcelona? Parties, right? So which one, which city has a better nightlife? Auckland or, or Barcelona? No brainer? Yeah, not even bother answering, right? Okay, let's say Barcelona, just to say that. Um, which city, Auckland, Barcelona, or Freiburg, Germany, has more sunlight? Anyone? Auckland, that's the right answer. That's the right answer. Auckland has more solar resources, basically for generating solar, than Barcelona. And that is shocking to a lot of people. You know, I've heard the mythology, oh, solar is not gonna happen here. We're, we're not a sunshiny country. Well, that's not true. Auckland is actually more sunshiny than um, Barcelona, which is pretty amazing. So let me talk about the solar disruption. Since the year 1970, the cost of solar has improved exponentially at about 22%. That's, this is the learning curve. So essentially, every time the solar capacity doubles, uh, the cost of solar goes down by 22%. So essentially, so this is a couple of weeks old. Now it's at 60, 58 cents. Solar has gone down from $100 a watt to 58 cents today. Okay, that's an exponential curve. And at the same time, which is something that you need to look at, you need to look at an exponentially improving technology, but also at a, at, a, at a market that's also growing exponentially. The market for solar PV, the installed capacity, has grown at a 43% compound annual growth rate. So it's essentially doubled every two years since the year 2000. Doubled every two years. Now. Do the numbers. If you keep doubling every two years, what's gonna happen? This. By 2030, 100% of all the energy, not just the electricity, all the energy on Earth will come from solar. Of course, you have to ask yourself, is it going to keep growing at this rate? Okay, because if it does, we have a major disruption at work, right? So can solar continue growing at 40 plus percent? 